Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins-Smith here with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about Medicare's ASP drug pricing files. And ASP, as discussed in a previous video, stands for Average Sale Price. These come out quarterly, and we're just going to review this really quick. So right here is the home page for the CMS ASP drug pricing files. If you don't have this bookmarked already, which I will put in the description for the video for you to have and bookmark, you can just go to Google type in CMS ASP and you can put whatever year it is. Uh, right now, obviously we're in 2022, but once we hit January, it's gonna come out with a new drug pricing file for the first quarter of next year. So you'd put in 2023 and it brings you up all of these links. So I'm gonna click on the first one, it brings me to where we started. As you can see, you can go over here and you can look at past ASP drug pricing files also here for this year because they come out every quarter. So you can see January, April, July, and October. When you click on this, it is a zip file and it's a folder. So it will download to your computer. And once it does, you open that folder, it will have two documents and it will have an Excel sheet for you that you will be referencing and that we will be looking at here in this video. But just so you know, this has some really great resources for you. I encourage you to look through this. It has the seasonal influenza vaccine pricing. So it has the 22, 23 right now, which is very handy, especially if you plan on giving the seasonal flu shot in your practice, or if you already are, you would want to make sure that you are charging the appropriate amount to the insurance so that you're getting reimbursed that full payment allowance that is showing here. And these are the effective dates by the CPT code. And not only would you want to make sure you're checking by the name and manufacturer to make sure you're billing out the right CPT code, but you'd want to be checking the NDC numbers on the FDA NDC uh, website, looking up those NDC numbers, making sure it all falls into place. Um, in my experience so far this year, most places got the 90688, which is the flu zone quadrivalent. They're billing out about $25 right now so that their write-offs aren't super high, uh, but they expect reimbursement to be almost $20.50 per vaccine. So anyway, um, this is how you can use this website. Uh, there's another website over here that explains exactly what goes into Medicare's process for determining the reimbursement and what the average sale price calculation is, how they get the data, how you can submit information. There's a bunch of links here. Um, usually it's ASP, so average sale price plus 6%. So they work with manufacturers of these drugs to help determine this. So I encourage you to come in here and read this and look through this so you understand it as well. I will put the link in the description of the video for this page as well. So you will have this one and you will have this one where you can go to the ASP drug pricing. And again, I got to the seasonal flu vaccines just on the left hand side right here. So one of those documents that you're going to download from the CMS website that we were just on is going to be this Excel file. And this is going to be the payment allowance limits for Medicare Part B drugs. And it tells you right here, the effective dates is 10-1-22 through the end of the year of December 31st, 2022. So in early January, you will want to get on here and do the same thing again. Just some things to make note of is the payment allowance limits, which is this column D right here, is subject to the average sales price methodology and based on the two second quarter of 2022 average sale price data. And again, that's the second website I showed you guys where you need to read through and kind of understand how they're doing this with manufacturers. The second note is the absence or presence of a HixPix code, which is your CPT code right here in column A, and the description of the HixPix or CPT code in column B, and the payment allowance limits in this table does not indicate whether Medicare covers a drug. 
These determinations shall be made by the local Medicare contractor or your MAC processing the claim. And I've done other videos in the past explaining that everybody in the country is assigned to a different Medicare contractor that administers all of your Medicare uh, information that the claims go through and they are the ultimate determining factor with this. This is basically just a guide. It's usually pretty accurate but again this is a disclaimer that you need to keep in mind. The column J is the notes section. This is stuff that Medicare puts in here for you to make sure you're paying attention to if you're looking up a specific CPT code. See right here, see the seasonal influenza vaccine pricing webpage, which we were just on, for current payment limits and effective dates. So make sure you're looking at this pretty close. Um, I did highlight a few of the common J codes that uh, practices will be billing out just for you guys to see. It can be cumbersome to try to scroll through hundreds of these codes here. So one of my favorite little tricks is hitting Control F and it's the Control Find and Replace button, but it's also you can find things or you can replace things. I use it to find things on documents, PDFs, Excels, Words. It's very helpful. So we're going to do J1100 and I'm just going to hit find next. And as you can see, I highlighted you have J1100 is for dexamethasone sodium phosphate of one milligram and the payment limit from Medicare is 12 and a half cents per unit. So if you are billing 150% of Medicare, then you would want to take this amount, times it by whatever your increase is, 150%, 200%, and then that will give you what you should be charging the insurance when you bill it out. So if it's double, then it's gonna be about what, 25 cents a unit with the expectation that you're gonna get paid about 12 and a half cents per unit. And I know this seems really low, but this is also not only important to find out how much to bill to payers when you administer these medications, but also to make sure that what you're getting reimbursed is comparable or close to what you're paying for these medications, right? So you would want to see how much you're paying for this medication and if the reimbursement is going to help you at all, you know, make cover your costs. Uh, is it going to even cover a little bit of the extra of the supplies, like the syringes and the needles, maybe even staff time? But those are things that need to be considered when you're looking at this. So if we just scroll down here, I did not highlight anything in column J, so this is something that Medicare put on here. And they just want to bring to your attention that they've added this recent CPT code to this list as of October of 2022. So earlier in the year on the other lists that were provided each quarter, these this drug and the other ones you'll see as we scroll down were not on it. So my guess is they're new drugs or they just recently decided to cover them. But again, remember, they might not be covered. It's all up to your Mac. So we're just going to scroll down. Here's the AMB, uh, AMP based payment limit. This has to do with um, being able to substitute certain drugs. Uh, it's on that link that I showed you, so I would definitely look that up if these are online items that you bill out and understand what that means. I'm just doing a high overview right now on how to use this guide right now, but if these are going to affect you and these are drugs that you're going to be administering and you see these notes, then you need to Google, look on the CMS website and understand what these mean to you. Here's another one that was added. Another one, here's on Dancitron, J2405, one milligram, looks like it reimburses a little over eight cents, eight and a half cents a unit. And then you have some that are pretty expensive that reimburse pretty high, um, but most of your drugs are probably going to be pretty low because they're older. They usually don't cost a lot for people to get in-house. I did highlight the triamcinolone because as you notice, there are certain medications that have more than one HICPIX code associated to it, and it's all determined by the HICPIX description and the dosage. So the HICPIX dosage, remember, is different than the NDC dosage billing units. Uh, like dexamethasone, the J1100, I know off the top of my head, because I've done the calculation, 
the one milligram of dexamethasone is actually a one milliliter NDC billing unit. But the Hix-Pix billing unit is different and it's one milligram just like this one and then you have a 10 milligram. So you want to make sure that your staff is billing out the correct CPT codes for which medications they're administering. And if you give both in your office, you want to make sure that they are choosing them correctly at the appropriate time in which they're giving them. You need to make sure your billers and coders can catch this for you and scrubbing it correctly. And it's just a lot of education when it comes to your clinical staff or whoever's entering it on the chart note or the billing data to make sure that they aren't getting these confused because they are reimbursed differently and you don't want to cause any kind of billing fraud. And even though it's unintentional, it still can be um, you know, considered fraud if it's repeated. So you just wanna make sure you have fail saves in place and that you've educated your staff. Look, here's another triamcinolone um, that has to do with, so you just have to make sure you're reading these Hix-Pix de descriptions, you're looking at the bottles, you're looking at the Hix-Pix dosages, and you're making sure that things are being selected appropriately by your staff so that you're billing out accurately. And you can go down here. I'm not going to spend a ton of time, but you can see there's a bunch of different drugs. Here's a ciprofloxacin for otic suspension for the ears. So these aren't just all injectables. There are orals on here. See right here, cyclosporin, 100 milligrams oral. Um, I'm guessing that this is probably per pill. Um, but you'd want to look all of that up and make sure that your units that you're billing out is going to be equivalent to what you're administering in the office and that you're going to be reimbursed appropriately. So these aren't just for injections. These are also for other medications that are administered or could be administered in your office. And then my last example, I believe um, it's my last one, is this one. So this is for the, all the asthmatics that come into your office if you treat asthmatics. So if you're in urgent care, primary care, allergy, asthma, uh, pulmonary office, you're going to most likely be um, doing some nebulizer treatments in your office. And so you're gonna to wanna to look these up and make sure that you're billing them out correctly on whatever you're using. Are you doing the budesonide? Are you doing the combination albuterol, ipratropium, uh, the level albuterol? What are you administering in your office? Which is the correct, or what are the correct CPD codes if you administer or have more than one, which a lot of places do. What is the dosage? Does your staff know that there's a difference? Do they understand? Do they have cheat sheets that you've provided to them to help them understand what they should be billing out for what and if they need to change the amount of units. Do you have favorites that you can mark in your EMR to help you? Do you have coders and billers scrubbing this appropriately to make sure if your staff messes up somebody else can kind of do a quality control audit and, and change anything that's not there? Uh, you have another ipatropium. These are all you know things that need to be looked at and considered and then you need to make sure that you're getting reimbursed what you're supposed to. So you need to be running these reports in your billing system and making sure that for J7626, you're at least getting reimbursed, you know, 96 and a half cents essentially from straight Medicare. And that's for this quarter. What was it last quarter? You probably should look it up for the July through September and see what they were reimbursing. Sometimes it changes. So you'll have to compare that when you run those reports and make sure that you're looking at the right data a time frame to the correct payment allowance limits Medicare spreadsheet. But if you just go down here, see it says oral. So it's really important that you're doing your research, you understand what you're giving in your office, your staff understands what you're giving in the office, and that they understand there could be multiple different J codes. So if they were to touch just type in albuterol when they're searching for a J code, they're gonna get you know one, two, at least three different J codes. How are they gonna know which is correct? I mean, hopefully they'll know if they're using a combo med, but maybe they won't, maybe they're green, maybe they don't understand how that works. So it's really important that someone is checking on this in the billing, educating staff if things are mistakes repeatedly, and educating your staff up front, making sure they understand what they're administering for patient safety reasons, right? And that they understand what drugs they're giving and why they're giving it to them and the dosage. So anyway, I hope this helps. I'm just kind of going through. I will put the link again to the ASP page and that other resource page in the description for the video. Smash the thumbs up 
button if today's video was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and please leave anything in the comments that you would like me to know about if you have experience working with this fun, fun ASP pricing for CMS that comes out every quarter, because, I mean, you just have to set a reminder on your calendar to go back and look if, if you're the one in charge of it or whoever is, because it can get overlooked, but it is very important. So anyway, take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.